All right, good afternoon no. again. Uh, we're yeah. delighted uh, to be joined by the Secretary General Special Representative in the Central African Republic, Mr. Parfait Onanga Anyanga, who is obviously also the head of the UN peacekeeping mission there. Parfait, welcome back, and you Thank have you. the floor. Thank you so much. Um, it's such a pleasure, Stefan, to um, be here and come back to HQ after meeting yesterday with uh, uh, council members. Um, and coming at a moment where indeed the mission and the country uh, is uh, um, going through some um, very difficult moments. We have done well, uh, as you may be aware. We've gone through um, a very um, um, effective um, political reform process um, with the end of the transition that lasted three years. Elections were held and um, viewed by um, many observers are very credible. Uh, a new government is in place, a parliament is in place, national institutions are um, um, slowly but uh, surely um, 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 working. Uh, and yet, um, we are still faced with a country um, with um, so many armed groups roving um, in, um, uh, in the most remote areas and still causing uh, so much pain and suffering to uh, civilian populations. And people are sometimes wondering, why is it still happening, even as the mission, an important peacekeeping mission, is in place? And um, um, our answer has been um, uh, constant, um, to say that uh, it's precisely because there is a peacekeeping in this country, in the Central African Republic, that um, uh, we can still call this country a country, uh, that we've been able to keep together uh, this uh, fragile nation. Um, uh, for those who don't know, 47 years in the, uh, 57 years since independence, 47 years of all sorts of instability, coups, and, and mutinies, and, and so on and so forth. So meaning, what? is really at hand for us is not an easy task. Uh, it's a daunting task. We still have 14, 14 armed groups in the country. Just recently, they all agreed to come to um, the um, um, consultative committee established by the head of state um, to hold inclusive uh, dialogue around the implementation of the national uh, disarmament and demobilization and, and reintegration program, the so-called DDR. Uh, but let's face it, the reality is uh, not really all of them are pleased with uh, uh, what is being proposed to them. I believe it would be extremely difficult to convince these uh, um, armed groups that uh, peace is um, um, uh, worth trying. Um, um, they, there is an ongoing um, uh, predatory, you know, uh, and lucrative uh, business that is going that that, that is uh, taking place in the country. Most of these armed groups are holding and controlling uh, mining sites and and over diamonds and and gold. Therefore, what should be the incentive for them to join a peace process? Um, and the competition that is, I mean, the, the violence that is going on at the moment is not a war between the government and armed groups. What we, 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 we're seeing is a war between armed groups. They are competing for control of these very uh, wealthy um, um, uh, sites and, 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 uh, and, and um, uh, uh, provinces. So we have this um, to address. And since um, uh, some of the justifications to the ongoing war uh, have been marginalization, lack of partici political participation, um, and then we have been saying, then uh, why don't you simply join the um, political process proposed by the government? Um, 
Um, and to support this initiative, the Secretary General has just uh, called on all of us to ensure that we can re-energize the political process in the country. We will be doing it very soon by um, uh, supporting um, a peace initiative proposed by the African Union and uh, with other partners, the European Union, um, uh, France, uh, the, the US, uh, the ECAS, uh, this is the uh, economic community of Central African states. We will be meeting soon um, in, uh, in Brussels ne next week just to see how can we, among um, uh, you know, uh, partners, help the government outline a roadmap uh, that would make it possible for it to uh, re-engage politically and uh, uh, ensure that moving forward, um, the divergences uh, that may oppose uh, uh, citizens you know, uh, in the South African Republic could be solved through dialogue means and not, as is the case today, through this brutal um, um, war. And, um, and, and as we do it, we'll have also to do something um, um, and to, 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 to ensure that MINUSCA as a force has all the means um, required to uh, provide better support uh, to civilian populations. And, uh, and this will be uh, an important undertaking. Uh, the Deputy M M Milad, uh, uh, military advisor, was just two days ago in, uh, in Bangui to discuss with our force commander to see how can we um, make a better use of uh, the asset that you have. And if there are gaps, how can we also meet those gaps, go, go back to the council and seek their support in order to ensure that we can have a better protection of civilian populations, working hand in hand and hoping that national security and defense forces will also raise a little bit more the game and they will take a, a, a bigger share into the effort that needs to be done to uh, ensure that populations are, are better protected. Uh, because as, as, as we speak, you may be aware that um, a car is really the country where um, the violence has, has, has been extremely uh, costly and has really uh, affected even humanitarian uh, uh, assistance is being affected. Um, humanitarian workers have been suffering from the violence uh, inflicted to them upon them by um, uh, the, these armed groups. We have just lost, as you, uh, as you are aware, our own peacekeepers. We have become a target. We are not, no more you know, uh, 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 protected sim simply by our, our, our blue, blue, blue helmet. And therefore, we are to provide a, a response that on the security front will enable us to protect better ourselves so that we can better protect also civilian populations. And as we do this, uh, it is clear that um, there will be no military response. I mean, there is there is be no military answer to the uh, as in many other uh, conflict situations in the car. Um, uh, what is happening is uh, is uh, is a deeply uh, 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 political and security um, um, uh, uh, um, um, really. Uh, um, uh, conflict and, and therefore the answer to um, um, this conflict will have to go political and therefore we want to re-energize the the, 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 the the political mediation and we hope that by all these uh, 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 joint efforts um, we will soon help this country to move um, away from the psychical violence that has really caused so much so many lives in this country and once and for all, maybe give a chance to um, a car to uh, make uh, a, a better use of the fullest potential of its huge, you know, uh, um, 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 green lands and, and, and natural resources so that it, it, it may become also a, a very stable nation in the Central African Republic. But I will just end by saying that. Uh, um, Current days are pretty somber. Um, um, and, and, and the cost for um, um, civilian population has been e extremely um, heavy. Um, more than half of the population of the country, 2.2 million, really are in need of emergence 
uh, emergency uh, uh, um, assistance, urgent assistance, humanitarian assistance. As we speak, some 18,000 population have been affected by the recent violence in, in Bangasu. Some of them are um, flown away to, um, um, to um, uh, the neighboring DRC to seek refuge. And sadly, uh, for um, um, a big number of them, uh, the um, uh, lives are being threatening uh, threatened by uh, simply their uh, religious origins uh, because they are Muslims and being targeted by other uh, violent armed groups, uh, namely the anti barakas uh, And uh, as we, we, we strive to do this, um, our soldiers haven't spared any of their you know, um, energy, uh, courage, and even blood to... Um, uh, protect civilian populations. Yet we're losing soldiers. Yet uh, we're mourning because some of us have been badly and savagely killed. But I am here to say that the resolve and stamina of the group of the of the mission is strong. We know that these are difficult times, but we know that we, when I say we, as a UN family we may be simply the best answer today for the country, for Central African Republic. Therefore, we must stay the course. And this is exactly what I said yesterday at the Security Council. And I'm reassured, uh, given the amount of support that this mission still enjoys from Security Council members, I've just seen the same um, at the, at the uh, peace, uh, peace building confederation uh, on Central African uh, m meeting, there is um, and we appreciate that, uh, an, an immense expression of international solidarity for the Central African Republic. Therefore, we will continue uh, to um, exert every effort to ensure that this country um, is in a better place in the coming days. As we do this, um, I am still asking uh, more for my team, more from, for, 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 for my, um, uh, from my colleagues. I want to ensure that we act with the highest possible moral standards and of conduct and discipline in, um, in, in mind. And uh, as I said it before, um, uh, MINUSCA is and will continue to be the battleground against SEA. Uh, because it's not a place where any of my people, any of my staff can hide. Um, and we are not doing only because of the image of the organization. We do it because it's morally right, and we do it because it's simply morally unacceptable that we, the UN, can go to any place where we have to protect people who are so vulnerable and whose misery is, is simply, uh, nobody can fathom what we're talking about. And it's simply unacceptable that any of us any one of us holding this blue flag, wearing this blue helmet, any one of us, be it a civilian or a police or military personnel, we engage in activities that is simply not acceptable. Um, not acceptable for this uh, organization, not acceptable for this Secretary General, not acceptable to me and to any of my uh, senior uh, um, leadership uh, uh, in, in, in the mission. And we have made it very clear that for us, SCA is the enemy. Because regardless of all the sacrifices that we've been making in this, uh, in this mission, we're losing people um, every year. Uh, last year, over 20 of us for many, uh, for different reasons. So we're paying an immense sacrifice. And so it pains me to see that Regardless of all this sacrifice, this mission has a stigma of, you know, uh, simply be, um, on uh, what is being remembered of this mission is SEA. It's unacceptable. And I'm, seeing, I'm saying that this is a legacy of the past. And, and uh, all the measures that we have put in place indeed are paying off. The zero tolerance policy is working. Uh, it is working, and our goal, as I said yesterday at the Council, is to reach zero, zero cases. 
But we have also made it very clear that we, we are not anymore only in the business of um, talking. We want to ensure that we provide a better assistance and better protection to the victims. And, and, and therefore, I have hired in my, on, on my team um, uh, a victim uh, um, advocate uh, whose main focus will be to ensure that we go and provide the strongest possible assistance to, to victims and also be able to follow up cases both with HQ, f with, with, with New York, in, their relations, in, in, the, in, in following up on, on cases with member states, but also on the ground, ensuring that the victims uh, get the best possible psychological, uh, medical, and, and, and else. Uh, any support that will be required uh, is provided to, to these people. And we have been ourselves very openly going out and calling uh, and, and um, inviting the population to tell us stories. We said if they know something, they should tell us something because we want to be the first one to know so that we can better uh, address uh, this coach uh, that is called ACA. So I will end with these words, simply to say that the task is daunting, um, but the spirit is high, and we will do everything possible to ensure that we support this country. And as we support this country with our uh, commitment, uh, we do it also in a way that is ethically um, and morally uh, right. Thank you very much, Buffy. Rosalind? Thank you, sir. Rosalind Jordan with Al Jazeera English. I have a couple of questions. First, on the Congolese battalion in Beberati, will the Congolese troops be repatriated because of the allegations of their sexual abuse, corruption, other bad behavior? And then, regarding your point about the armed groups fighting each other, in part because they have access to natural resources which could bring them money. Is it possible during a negotiation among all the groups to address this question of resource allocation or will the central government under President uh, Tuedora be forced to nationalize all of these resources in order to stop the violence? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, on the first question, um, what I can say is that um, the uh, organization is, um, of course, assessing um, this um, 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 extremely um, delicate um, matter. Um, the country, of course, has been um, uh, seized of the matter. I understand. Uh, a delegation of the concerned country will be soon um, traveling to, um, to, to, to New York and discuss with um, um, relevant UN officials uh, the nature of um, the allegations against uh, that uh, contingent. Um, I do also appreciate the fact that uh, we have uh, now um, uh, under Security Council Resolution 2272, a mechanism that precisely um, allows uh, uh, both uh, TCCs and troop contributing countries and the Secretariat and member state and relevant member state um, under the ages of the Council to uh, discuss this uh, kind of, uh, of, of concerns. And, and the Council has been clear uh, um, that authority has been given to the Secretary General uh, once it is established that any given contingent is not uh, uh, behaving in a way that is compatible with the highest standards of conduct and discipline that we want to see, uh, that contingent will have to uh, accept that there will be consequences. And, and, and therefore, uh, um, um, I have full trust in um, the result of that um, interaction with the concerned country and, um, uh, 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 and trust also that uh, appropriate decisions will be made uh, that will be uh, consistent with our uh, uh, um, um, 
uh, strong resolve to uh, uh, fully implement uh, the Secretary General's uh, zero tolerance policy. So um, I, I'm, I, I trust um, this, this matter will be, will be addressed in, in the most appropriate manner. And by the way, uh, this will not be the first time um, that MUNISCA um, is uh, um, called to, or is uh, um, um, making decisions of that nature, uh, that at least the UN decides uh, to um, uh, separate one of the member states, one of contingents from, uh, um, from our uh, peacekeepers um, due to a misconduct related to SEA in particular. So uh, I, I don't see why um, any other situation would be treated differently. So, but there is a process, and I think it was a good thing that uh, the Security Council established uh, under that important resolution uh, this type of mechanism. Because uh, the, the, the point here is uh, uh, it's, it's not only a punitive mechanism. Uh, some of the countries that we're talking about are first timers in peacekeeping. And I have seen some of them making efforts to improve uh, their you know, performance. Uh, but there are limits. And we cannot simply afford in the name of uh, underperformance that people are hurt and that our values and principles are uh, tarnished. So um, um, that, that's what I can say on this, on, 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 on this matter. On the second uh, question, I mean, frankly, um, anything that we see in the car is first and foremost um, uh, a reflection of the realities on the ground. It is a weak state. Uh, it is a state that does not have the ability to uh, um, express uh, and project strength and force. And above the force of law, and um, uh, the force of its own security and defense forces. Um, and that's why there is an immense effort that is taking place at the moment to restore uh, security sector reform, you know, sector, the, the, uh, in order to uh, um, uh, ensure that this country has the ability, has the capacity to project force. And uh, through different programs, this is uh, an ongoing work, um, uh, but, um, uh, it will be. Uh, it will take some time. At the moment, MINUSCA is um, a de facto substitute of state authority, and and, and therefore, uh, part of our mandate, as you you may recall too, under 2201, uh, is to uh, take measures uh, that um, uh, would promote um, a, a DDR program in the country, and this is what the government is doing. And should there be no collaboration, no cooperation from armed groups, um, um, we um, are expected to use um, every uh, means in our capacity to achieve, uh, uh, you know, um, to, to ensure that those armed groups are, are disarmed. And uh, part of the plan that MINUSCA is trying to implement entails also uh, retaking control, regaining control of those mining sites. Because precisely as long as this effort will not be done, will not be completed, uh, these armed groups will still have the, the, the capacity to uh, um, uh, um, uh, finance uh, their uh, very murky business. So uh, it, it's an ongoing effort. Uh, and what kind of measures the president will take, uh, this I, I, I don't know yet. but. Uh, overall, overall, and again, that's why we said our preference would be to go for dialogue, because you, we cannot, um, in the current circumstances, uh, the government lacking uh, uh, its own capacities, uh, a UN peacekeeping is not meant to be fighting a war. Um, so, uh, as we use force, we are absolutely conscious of the fact that even within the Security Council the rules and principles of peacekeeping haven't changed. We, 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 we're really trying to push the boundaries of peacekeeping and use force in a way that is measured, firm, but still respectful of the overall uh, framework under which a peacekeeping operation uh, operates. Uh, so within those confines, we can only be effective if there is a thorough 
uh, 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 political process, and therefore it will be a combination of all this together uh, to ensure that uh, um, uh, we get the result we are looking for. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, uh, Joseph Klein, Canada Free Press. Um, I want to return to the uh, Congolese um, mm. issue, mm. and I appreciate the delicacy of the situation, mm. but there have been uh, reports of complaints um, escalated uh, since at least the beginning of the year about the conduct, discipline, readiness of the Congolese battalion, including SEA allegations. I believe a form of commander has been repatriated, uh, but there continues to be complaints, uh, including one going back to, uh, to uh, May of this year, and it's been a month since then. And are you saying that this whole issue and what to do about it is just still under review? Has an re assessment report been completed that can be um, shared publicly? Um, and what is the timetable if, if um, this evaluation has not been completed? Uh, because it goes beyond SEA. Apparently, it also goes to um, a, a, a lack of preparedness of, of facilities in this base. So, so could you speak to that, please? Well, um, I mean, the, the only thing I can add to that is that um, uh, any time you have situations of this, um, of, of this nature, there is indeed um, also a concern uh, with regard to command and control um, and discipline and overall management of any given contingent. So what this issue, this, this story reveals is that um, at the level of the mission and the UN, we take performance very seriously. So we have an ongoing dialogue with member states because, uh, as you may be aware, sir, um, unfortunately, we don't have many, you know, really and willing um, candidates to, for peacekeeping in the Central African Republic. Uh, so we, 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 and as I said, some of them are first timers coming into peacekeeping and, by the way, making contributions when it comes, I mean, uh, uh, which en enable, um, under very difficult circumstances, all of us to prevent. Uh, you know, this country to go into, into uh, a, a much more um, uh, 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 violent and, and we were almost on the verge of a genocide in that country. So we had to do with what we had, uh, with what we have. And, and we do with what we have today. And what we have is scrutinized. And if what we have is not good, we are the first one to go to contingent and to tell them, sorry, this is not right. Um, you better correct or else, or you go. And, and, and as I said, uh, now we have uh, an established mechanism, and I'm confident that uh, decisions will be made that would take into account um, the, the need for us to stand the ground and to, to, to stand our ground and to, to, to stand to the, the principles that uh, must uh, really... Uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, command um, the the way we do business in in places like uh, like in Central African Republic or elsewhere. So I'm very confident that this process will uh, uh, achieve a result that will be uh, uh, consistent with uh, that policy. But what what is the timetable for completing the assessment in this case of of uh, claims that have gone back at least to, toward the beginning of the year, and what steps are in place right now what? to wait, wait to ensure that the troops still remaining at the base who have not been repatriated will not continue their SEA behavior. Well, first, um, just to be fair to that particular contingent, um, I must say that ever since the. this matter was brought to the attention of the first commander, um, the, that particular contention has reacted and has reacted rather positively and sent down and has, 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 has uh, started implemented a number of improvements that um, um, you know, are being evaluated and appreciated by 
um, by the leadership of of um, of, of of the mission. Um, uh, ju just to say that it is not something that is known to us when it comes to the media. It is something that is part of our daily business. And therefore, we have a responsibility to do with what we have and to ensure that uh, TCCs, I mean, uh, troop contributing countries, understand the requirements under which we operate. And therefore, uh, if, you know, in the coming days, it's a matter of days, if in the coming days, uh, the evaluation is, is made and uh, concludes that uh, we're still far from where we want to be, then appropriate decisions will be made. Mr. Abadi, then Joseph. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, presentation. My name is Abadi from the paper Le Dossier. You described a very difficult situation in CAR with competing armed factions. And yet you appeal to morality and ethics. Did you appeal to the council on that basis, knowing that the council acts on the basis of national interest and strategic interest? Or did you make concrete recommendations to the council? Well, um, sir, the, um, as, as you said yourself, the situation is complex. Um, in, in the car. Uh, people are still dying. Uh, people are in, are in dire, dire situations. Um, um, and and uh, we need urgent action, and urgent multifaceted action, including urgent emergency uh, assistance to those who are um, um, su suffering today. And, and I think this, this must be uh, a priority uh, for all of us and the Council took note and, and, and I think um, um, renewed its commitment to ensure that um, um, appropriate answers would be, would be made. And um, as I mentioned, uh, the um, uh, deputy uh, um, uh, military advisor was in Bangui. Um, he is back. Um, uh, he made um, um, a, a reassessment of the situation. Findings would be uh, reviewed and um, um, adjustment will be made to ensure that we can respond in a way uh, that is commensurate with um, the, uh, uh, the daunting challenges that we, we, we face on the ground. And so, at least for the car, I can really simply say that I have seen unity of uh, um, uh, purpose and, and concern by the member states, uh, and I'm, I'm confident that uh, members will be acting both on, indeed, this appalling, um, um, uh, absolutely unacceptable moral situation that, uh, that lives are being lost, that people are dying. Uh, but at the same time, um, and this is um, uh, my own uh, requirement to all my colleagues, uh, we cannot take any excuse for failing morally the people we are supposed to serve. Uh, yeah, a few months ago, actually it was more than a few months ago, you were here and, and said that Carr was turning a corner in a positive way. So what accounts for the steep decline, the rapid decline? Does it have something to do with uh, Sangaris leaving the country? Mm -hmm. And also, uh, what is your impression of the United States' uh, um, support of, of MANUSCA? Thanks. Thank you. Uh, for the last question, the support is strong and reaffirmed time and again. And by the way, President Tuadera was here and had a chance to interact himself directly with uh, US authorities who have been very clear expressing support to CAR. Um, and, 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 and this is the assumption under which we, we, we're still operating. I will be going tomorrow to Washington um, and will be uh, indeed um, uh, discussing with um, uh, State Department officials um, and, uh, and uh, other important uh, uh, stakeholders, um, maybe at the Hill. Um, we want to make a case for, uh, for um, not for the car, but for the people. What I want to say is, um, um, I mean, it must be good for any um, lawmaker, for any um, uh, diplomat, uh, for any civil, um, civil servant to be engaged in 
an operation like the one we all having in, in Minusca, in, in, in Bangui. Because what we do there is the good face of peacekeeping. What we do there is saving lives. Uh, what we do there has enabled this country to regain control. We've been able to push the boundaries of, you know, reestablish re state authority and a sense of decency. Uh, just two days ago, um, actually it was on May 30th, um, my colleague Andrew Gilmore was in Bangui. And he had this opportunity working with my, uh, uh, one of the de my deputies, Dan Connor. They, they launched this uh, mapping report, uh, which provided an opportunity to review uh, the awful crimes that have been committed uh, in, in that country uh, since 2003, uh, 2015. And that provided an amazing opportunity for everyone to understand that we watch, we have eyes, and that um, later, sooner or later, um, that justice will, 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 will catch up. And this is maybe one case where even if justice has been delayed, um, 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 it was justice will not be denied. And, 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 and therefore, we can do all of this simply because we have um, this um, um, force on the ground. And, we, which we, and, and, and this is where we do understand that as much as we have um, to think that we will not be there forever. And, and that with everything we do, we always have to have an exit strategy, uh, especially um, um, in today's you know, uh, peacekeeping. Um, we, 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 we want to uh, 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 simply say that what has been done in the country was good, and we have to stay the course, and that's um, what as I, I told the, the council yesterday. And I'm confident that together, the international community in support of this country with the fullest responsibility of the Central Africans themselves uh, because we will never, we will never win this without the Central Africans themselves. So I'm confident that um, um, uh, we will be able to win this extremely um, difficult um, endeavor. Now, on the, where we are today, I simply want to say that uh, it's awful uh, this violence is simply this violence is simply unacceptable, and it's just the nature of a weak state, uh, just the nature of uh, uh, the conflict in these places where it's simply um, um, uh, unpredictable, um, um, and 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 th this is why uh, it is so critical that what wasn't done before, uh, that is the lack of a political process the lack of an inclusive political process. Now is the time. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that um, to, to, together with the force and all key partners, um, in two days we'll be going to Brussels um, with the EU and, and, and um, uh, all stakeholders, the African Union, to provide an opportunity to re-energize uh, uh, this uh, African initiative uh, so that um, um, we can see that in the in the in those efforts for sustaining peace in the car, which um, maybe I was over optimistic, but which I know will never be an easy undertaking. Uh, uh, we will all need a dose of patience, uh, but in the end, I'm I'm confident that we um, um, we may um, overcome. I know you have to say one last question for the young lady in the back who's been very patient. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Nirvani Williams from La Voce de New York. And I know that uh, the president of the community of Satyajitio um, described that the Central African Republic was at the priority of his organization. And I just wanted to know how Italy's role during this time changed, maybe changed the dialogue about ceasing violence from armed groups in CAR uh, within the UN and towards conflicting countries. Well, um I was I was uh, yesterday very pleased to listen to the president of San uh, Egidio. Um, uh, they just recently signed an MOU, indeed, with um, 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 uh, USG uh, Feldman, uh, establishing more formally uh, the relationship between the UN and that organization. Uh, I've come to discover um, the, um, if, let's say the. The, 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 how subtle this uh, institution uh, is operating. They don't have the kind of rules and <laughs> that we have here at the UN, and therefore, um, 
it provides them greater access and reach. Um, and indeed, I can confirm that they have been talking to all arm groups, all 14 arm groups in the country, which is quite impressive. Um, and um, th there seems to be an indication that uh, um, uh, soon they will be able to debrief um, all interest interested parties, including the UN, but also the African Union and the European Union, uh, on the result of their uh, efforts. And, um, 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 and with the government's presence, there is a hope that um, anything that, uh, uh, that may make sense that armed groups have shared with uh, San Egidio will be evaluated, will be assessed, and will be put you know, um, on, on the table to, to see whether really everyone is ready to walk the walk and, and talk the talk so that uh, once and for all we can really put an end to this madness. Buffy, thank you very much. Huh? Thank you. Thank you.